Alright, fellers. What's going on? What time is it? Fellers. Fellers. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Real Relay Podcast in the building. Barbara, who we got today? How y'all feeling today? It's we got a summer. very, very special guest, Real Relay fam. We got Hero, the MC, the founder of Bars Over Bars, right? Yes, sir. Alrighty, so... He got um, that. You got it. <laughs> yeah. got it. Got it. Yes, yeah, sir, Ski. Past couple guests, I've been botching the intros. I'm like, but, dude, Ooh. I am like... I am so bad with names. It's not. It's not even. It's not even funny. Oh, dude, we had we had uh, John Scott on here from Phoenix Down Recording. Woo! Yeah. I was a mess, but he was a good guy about it. I <laughs> messed up twice on that. I was like John Glass, <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, "No, my name is John Scott." He goes, "Got you." All right, guys. John, John Glass. Glass. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, "No." <laughs> it was hilarious. But... Oh, I love John Glass. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, uh, like I said, founder of Bars Over Bars. Um, so hero. We usually like to start off by obviously you introducing yourself, but we typically ask Hero the MC, who are you today? And yes. welcome, welcome. Uh, my name is Hero the MC. I am a future superstar. Um, I make a lot of well, I am, I am a superstar. Success is self determined. I say that all the time. I'm going to write a book about it. Um, very it. successful every day that I wake up. Um, I make killer old school inspired music. I dropped a project a few months ago. I got a new project coming. Uh, besides that, I run a company called Bars Over Bars Media, and we throw shows all over New England, completely free for the artist, mostly at unique small businesses. Um, that way, really anywhere's a venue, and we're a complete pop-up operation, so we can do stuff anywhere. Okay, cool. I did see you had a show last night, right? Yes, sir. How'd that go? Dude, it was it was fantastic. We had a packed house. It was uh, it's it's in a music studio they're building, so it's like real construction site vibes. But okay. um, so but real underground vibes. Real underground. Nice. I like that. We oh. had a great time. I was gonna say, what part, what was the party that you dropped recently? Uh, I dropped Polyvinyl Chloride, which is a nine track project. I dropped that on May thirtieth, um, and it's been a little bit since I dropped any music, but I'm working on some new stuff and hopefully trying to have something out by the end of the year. Like a EP or like a full album? Or? At least ten tracks. So a project. Talk, yeah, talk to me about that hustle. Oh, actually, before that, who we got today? Who we got? Who's, who's your guest? Who we got? Uh, my guest is DJ Mad Dog 2020. <laughs> wiki wiki. Yeah, wiki, like wiki. <laughs> Tell them about yourself. Who are you today? You can put the mic down too if you need to. Mad Dog? <laughs> Tell him. <laughs> Talk that shit into the mic. I just press play, man. I help him run sound whenever he needs it. So. Uh, this is my beautiful wife. She's being humble. She, Talk she's that being shit. Super Talk humble. That, Talk that shit, hero. Um, Talk that shit. A lot of people want to give me the credit for all the shows we throw, and and at the end of a show, I say like we built this and we did this, and but a lot of people are like, well, I mean, you brought all the sound and you did all the shit, so I I do a lot, but it's not all me, but. She helps with everything, and it's literally not possible without her. Mm -hmm. So she um, and she runs sound. She she DJs a lot of our events, and she's that's sick. She's really good. That's nice. better than okay. like that's be some people don't do anything. You know what I mean? But like even if you like just a little support, like I talked to her about right before this, the support like we could be artists, we could be creatives, we can be anything. But we're nothing without the fans. We're Definitely. nothing without the twenty to thirty viewers we always talk about. You know what I mean? Because those are the people that support you and bring you all the way up. Hell yeah. That's it. Go ahead. I'm glad. Give her credit. I love that. So talk about me about this hustle, man. What's going on? So you just dropped the project literally you said a couple months ago and you yep. wanna drop you wanna drop some more shit. Yeah. Talk to me about that type of hustle, that fire with you as a starting up in Boston, this Boston area. Yeah. Uh so it's 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 just making the most amount of content and pushing it to the masses and the hustle that we that I have as an artist and that we have as a team to put out music and put out and do as many shows as we do which is close to 15 a month is that's a lot ridiculous 15 it's, shows a month it's ridiculous we've done 92 events since March of last year Damn. so we've we, we found a way to do shows during a global pandemic we're still doing shows during a global pandemic I think it's still still a thing yeah. I guess but so like the turnouts are good and everything that you're seeing from the from the inception to yeah. now, you've seen the growth. Oh, the growth is crazy. We've uh, on Instagram, we've gained two thousand followers in the last three months. That's crazy. The oh, growth, wow. the growth is the growth is crazy. Um, and not only do we do things completely free for the artist, we do free photo and we do live stream. We you guys on Twitch. We Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube simultaneously, Damn. and it's all direct audio. Whatever comes through the soundboard goes to the live stream. And that, and not only is the show relevant as we promote it, but it's relevant after because 
once it's done live stream, it's on the internet forever. And then people can clip that and watch it and do that. And if and if a venue's ever like, well, I don't really know what you're like hip hop show, I don't really know what you're talking about, I can send them like here's like full documentation of an event that we had that I can show you. Yeah. And I have ninety two examples of that. And that's just crazy. Damn and it kind of reminds me of like some double XL type of shit. You got the receipts. Yo, for sure. You, you guys should do like a uh, like a double XL type of shit when they do like the magazine and shit like that. But you should also do like, like a cipher. A, like a cipher. Yeah. That would be unreal. Yeah, we got some plans for stuff like that. That would be sick. You guys like they do like like when Pusha she does his ABCs, B for brr. <laughs> you guys should do some funny cool shit like that. That would be hilarious too. Well, that's awesome. Go ahead, bro. What else you got? Well, I'm chewing on some. Yeah, I got these fucking some big lace chips right now. Right but in terms of like how you started, like he said from the inception. But yeah. how did you get into like emceeing or like rap and rapping? Like when did that start? Mm-hmm. How'd you get there? What inspired you? Things like that. Yeah, what's yeah. your come up story? My uh, well, my mom took me to a Gangstar show when I was really young. And if a you, what show? Gangstar. Oh, okay. So you know, you guys know Gangstar. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a group in the '90s. DJ Premier and Guru. Mm-hmm. And Guru's yeah, Guru's passed. Uh, he passed. Uh, 11 years ago and that is somebody who like he's my top he's my top one forever he's to me the the best MC that will ever live has ever lived and um, I pretty much dedicate everything I do I do to him I'm just so musically inspired to this to this man and um, since since then I've just always been in love with hip-hop and I didn't really play my first show and I I made a lot of music especially right after high school I graduated in 2016, and I made some music, dropped some albums, only put my shit on SoundCloud. When I was ready to play shows, I was about 20, and I paid for a lot of the opportunities to play shows. And I've never, I've never really left a show that I've paid for and been like, this was worth it. Really? So, so I have um, really taken the best of the shows I've been a part of and the worst of the shows I've been a part of, and sort of molded that into my company to make the best possible experiences for me and the artists we book. And it's all free for the artist. It's all, it's 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 just so, it's pro-community, it's pro-artist. It's why are you doing pro- it? Why are we doing it? Yeah. Because we love it. You love the energy? Uh, it, it just, it creates, it creates this community where, where artists are working together and helping each other and really gaining from everything. When you... When you book artists for free, there's no animosity in the room. I literally don't care about turnout or anything because most of the events I book, I curate them. It's all talent. It's all people that work well together. There's a whole formula that goes with it that I can go into. Well, yeah, That's why, yeah, I want to. Yeah, I want to know because yeah. like, how do you, how do you make money? And I'm like, I don't want to go say that. How's it like, sustainable? How are you sustaining this? Fortunately, um, how old are you? How are you? I'm 23. Okay, or 20. I'm 20. Well. I'm, t- I'm 23. As of okay. re- this recording, is 23. <laughs> <laughs> um, most of the shows I book are really low budget. Really, um, I mean, the equipment we have is great. It's 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 better than some of the venues I've I've worked at that have sound. Yeah. So the equipment we have is good. It's just we're it's we've invested a lot into this, and the return's gonna come eventually. But right now we're just breaking even on stuff, which I'm very happy about. That's fine. Dude, the fact that you already broke even is the amazing. The fact that we're breaking even is great. And and the the beginning months of the pandemic where I'm literally just throwing money at shows to make them happen to get to a point where we're breaking even is just it's, Well, because it's some people sti- just keep losing it. But yeah. the fact that you're breaking even, you're waiting for that one show where you're like, Ooh, make a little money. Make a little yeah. bit of money. Make a little more. And then you go. Even if I lose money at a show here and there, it's like I know I'm gonna get it back next week. Yeah. You're you know, straight. it's and then sometimes I get in a position where we make a lot of money like last night and I can pay the artists. And it's not often that that happens, but, you know, it's it's, 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 it's there. It's and it, there. And it's not because they come in thinking like, oh, it's a free show. Yeah. Well, you get to give them a little bread after, give yeah. them a little clout. Like, that's perfect. Plus, we do, we, do, we do full photo. I took 750 photos last night. Damn, we grinded. And we run the live stream. So, so that, that in itself, I feel, is worth... It is it's it's worth yeah. an artist's time Bro, because for sure. because that's an album cover, that's a single cover, that's stuff you could use to promote your press release. Content on Instagram. It's, it's content on Instagram and the live stream, I mean like I like that's full video for your set. Bro, that's all over Twitch, YouTube, and what what program do you guys use for that? Because I saw that same program. Restream. Okay. Restream's yeah. awesome. It lets you um, it lets you stream on all the major platforms. Yeah, you can like do that. up to thirty there's like forty different platforms you can go to. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but like the, the three main ones, Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube, you can do like I have a the I have the the plan where you can do up to twelve at once. So I could do twelve Twitches if I wanted to. Uh -huh. So it it really it really does that. And and uh, we also live stream on Wednesdays. We call it just the Wednesday live stream. We take submission based tracks, we play them, and we and we try to give artists honest feedback, which is important because uh -huh. a lot of times you send like your friend a track and he just sends you back three fire emojis. And it's like sometimes you like sometimes you like really want to know like what do you like and what you don't and Damn. we try to be honest and give that feedback and the submission and we're getting more and more submissions every week. <laughs> Very rarely do I ever have to go looking for tracks because I just pull up the list on Wednesday and I got submissions Damn. and it's it's that's great. What do you, so there's a lot of, a lot of organic engagement. Yeah, what you're saying and yeah. that takes a while to that build takes a long time. We built we're it. On that. We've we've done 50 live streams since we've started. Um, We've missed a few weeks, but we've we've live streamed yeah. we've we've live streamed mostly every week since last November. Damn, so wow, that's bananas. So that's you bananas. really go an OT on that? Yeah, uh, we used to run a lot of live stream podcasts. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking about combining them into just. We haven't done them in a few months, but I'm thinking about combining them into one and just doing like different episodes. Like yeah. I used to do Check the Recipe, which would be an it would be like a genius lyrical breakdown, but in a podcast form. Ah. Oh. Um, and then we did, and then we would do front to back, which is kind of like that, but it's more like play the album, talk talk about the songs, kind of thing. I was gonna say, um, there's the one called, there's a podcast I listen to called Dissect or Di Dissect. Yeah, my buddy Ryan O'Key sent it to me. Um, it's similar, like you take like a whole album and you just dissect each track by yeah. track by track, but similar. You yeah. guys are like these guys are like the real no jumper. <laughs> Like no jumper does that shit too. Yeah. Where they where they take the songs and the submissions and shit like that, but it's also like a podcast too. Yeah. That's just crazy. Yeah. The Wednesday live stream that we do with the submissions, that's it's basically a podcast, yeah. and we do it every week, and the feedback from it's great. We're getting more and more people tuned in every time. Yeah, that's fucking bananas. And, and you and you strictly in the Boston area. Um, I mean, we play shows anywhere from Providence to Portland. Okay, we're, the New England area. New England, yeah. yeah. I, we haven't done anything in Vermont or Connecticut, but yeah. but to be honest, there's not really there's not really a hip hop scene there. Yeah. Everybody who lives in Connecticut mostly just goes to Boston or goes to New York. Would you agree, Mr. Are Connecticut? you from Are you from Connecticut? Uh, yeah, I'm from Connecticut. Yeah. I, they, mean, I mean, there's like, some stuff in Connecticut. There's some stuff in <laughs> yeah. Hartford, but like there's hip hop like in a lot of like the the, the small like smaller cities in Har yeah. like in Connecticut like Hartford, Waterbury, New Haven. Bridge. You'll find like people yeah. that are like grinding, trying to make music and doing it. But are they consistent and are they like you know really are in they, their bag about are they it? A hero? No. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. So um, I mean, w like I said, we're doing ten to fifteen shows a month. Most of them are in Massachusetts, but you know we don't. I I play one venue a month and it's Midway Cafe in Jamaica Plain. That's the one venue we do in Boston. I don't re I don't do anything else. Um, I do stuff in Somerville. We had we were in Bridgewater last night. We do a sneaker store in Haverhill. Dude, you know, I'm we, from Lawrence. Yeah, yeah. We're in. We're at. A, well, we were going to be at Spicket River Brewery this Friday. Ah, but they love but they have like last minute construction, so we're at El Taller instead. Ah, okay, okay, okay. That's lit. Yeah, you let me know you and Lawrence. I'll be lit. I'll come then pop off. Yeah, for that. that's a good time. I know a lot of Lawrence dudes. We've uh, uh there's a lot. I booked Zay. I don't know if you know him. Mm -mm. He's a cool dude. Um, There's a lot of cool Lawrence people. I booked. We booked Terminology last month. Okay. Oh, word. Yeah. Word. We got Superstar Snuck this month in okay. Lowell. Uh, we got a lot of cool events. Word. That's fucking sick. You know who's oh, a, yeah. who's a big Spanish guy? Nicky Jam. Nicky Jam. Nicky Jam. I haven't have not Lawrence. heard of him. He does. He uh, that's all like Spanish, Spanish music. Yeah. Like that. shit like that. That's lit. Right. So where do you guys do your Wednesday shows? Uh, uh, in my basement. Oh, where you where you live? I live in New Hampshire right now. Okay. What part? Uh, it's near Plasto, which is near Haverhill. Okay, where? So I live like it took me like fifty minutes to get here. So it's not, it's not, it's not bad. I drive. So you're like right over the border. Basically. Yeah, yeah. And it's 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 literally the best of both worlds. It's cheap living. I can get to Boston in an hour. I can get to Portland in an hour. And Portland is dope. Portland's dope. The uh, yeah. we're sort of like in the middle of. You know, I can get to any. I can get to any part of the hip hop scene in New England in two hours. True. And anything more than two hours, I'm like that's kind of far. But. Right. I like I like driving, so yeah, I feel you. Yeah, yeah, I got some family that's like from like Salem, New Hampshire, Sandown, New Hampshire. Um, yeah, so I feel you definitely. In that. I'm, I'm from Lawrence, so yeah, right there, literally, go yeah. in and out, go get, get some fireworks, go cross the border, go right to New <laughs> Hampshire. Nah, I feel you. Good shit, man. All right, two part question. Yep, go. Top five right now at this moment in your rotation. Top five. Okay. And then top five all time that are alive for you. They're gonna be the same. It's the same list. No, no. I'll ask. I got you. 
Give me your give me your favorite artist that you're listening to right now. Like say like from the new generation. Yeah. Like I'm talking about like the the Uzis, the Cardis, the fucking Futures, the Drakes, like that type of era. Yep. And then give me your like all time era. You know what I mean? Your all time favorites. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah I yeah. wouldn't put like. I love Jay Z, but he's not in my current rotation. You know, he's yeah. not my current one of people I'm listening to, but he's one of my all time goats. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely, so. definitely. Uh, who I'm listening to right now that I that I love locally, mm-hmm. um, Jay Faith. Um, I love Kemic. She's a killer MC. I listen to her shit all the time. I book her at a lot of our shows. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm always bumping terminology. Yeah, he's like such a such a legendary MC. He's he's got more albums than years of his life. That oh shit's God. that shit's crazy. Like it's cr- like the grind. The grind on that man is impeccable. Um, there's um, fucking love Michael Christmas. <laughs> I love that name. Love Michael. You heard of Michael Christmas, Mm-mm. dude? Uh, Michael Christmas is great. Um, God, you guys got me with the with the tough ones. I can't pick. I can't pick my favorites. No, just I mean, you're, even just naming some of them is dope. Yeah. What, um, what do you think? I was gonna say before you keep going. What do you think about the modern scene in hip hop right now? I think it's um. You try you hate it trash or? Do I you... think it's better, and I think it's getting better and better and better. And I I think I think we're we're taking steps since since the inception of Griselda. I feel like we're taking steps to where lyrical stuff is becoming more and more important. And um, the first time I ever did a podcast was with the Mirror Max. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know him. But he's a really cool dude. He runs the Tempest Zone podcast. And he asked me, like, what the future of Boom Bap was. And I was like, I think it's going down the drain. And then, like, a week after, like, Griselda's on the scene. And I was proved wrong very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, All right. So so for, like, the everyday, like, average person, what is Boom Bap? So it's, it's just kind of like the old school 90s hip hop sound. That's kind of, it's kind of what it is. And um, I don't know, you type in Boom Bap type beats. You'll get a. Is that your favorite type of beat? Yeah. De- oh, definitely. That's yeah. what I rap on. Do you listen to yourself? Uh, I listen to myself when I'm working on my music. Um, but um, no, do you, I do don't. You, do you think it's weird to listen to yourself? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. But at the same time, um, myself is really the only person I make music for. And I'm thankful that other people like it. Um, but I. I the music to me is such um, such a personal journey that like I don't record in anybody's studio. I don't really send my I don't I never send my stuff out to be mixed and mastered. Like everything is such. Russ. All my music is a personal journey for me, yeah. and uh, it it I feel like it needs to be that way for it to impact me, which which is kind of the only person I make music for. Which sounds like like a big ego thing, but. Um, Music has really saved my life, and I continue to make it because it makes me happy, and I'm very grateful that other people like it. I'll say, he reminds me of Ru- that. Like, like yeah. Russ. That sounds like, yeah, a lot like Russ. You're just Russ, you mix, master, you do your own shit, write your own shit. So you're, you're an artist, but you also put on events. Which puts me in a very weird spot. Yeah, right. so yeah. Like, How do you I, have time to like focus on you and your music, but also I don't. Like, do... Okay. I don't. Um, it's, really, it's really taking a back seat these last few months um and it's like it's like you get home after uh, after three shows in a row and you're just like i'm just gonna record we're gonna bang out these tracks i'm just i'm just in bed sleeping <laughs> is that true it's very true, it's very <laughs> true. <laughs> um when i find time i do work on music um i deliver pizza as a job so i always have time to write rhymes in the car so hey, that's fortunate that's the grind that's the real grind that's the real shit bro yeah um, I used to work at a cookie factory. I write a lot. It's just it's finding the time to record it, which um, is tough. Which is why I don't put out music as much as I'd like to. But at the same time, it's like when it, it'll be when it comes out, that's when it's perfect. And mm-hmm. there's no sort of like, I think I think it's cool to have like, uh, like certain dates in mind, but setting a deadline. For, for me at least really stresses me out which is why it's just like when it's out it's out you know when that, it's ready when it's ready it's ready that's good because your main shit you're really focusing on is the, is the concerts is the for the artists and shit like that that's yeah. your main thing is the brand you're on more he's more on that side so if you're like Drake and you got your your Drake's more like oh like music first music first music first OVO's kind of like always been big but second you're more like the brand first yeah it's just shit first than the music I I 
I'm like the music I make is is killer, but yeah. I truly believe that I have been put on this planet to to throw shows because I'm just we've done so many of them and and every show is just another reminder that like I'm good at doing this. Damn, that's we have a buddy named Matt Pastizi who does runs like his pot pow town like uh, essentially it's like a like a ski. He wants to do like essentially like rolling loud, but like at ski resorts and shit. Okay, do you? Would you want to like? Uh, that sounds perfect, right? Because he's always talking about. Sounds people. like a great idea. That right? Sounds like a great idea. Yeah. That's what I was saying. <laughs> That's what I was saying. But like, have you like? He wants to do like. He he loves like snowboarding and obviously he's a fucking mutiny, massive snowboarder like that. Skier like shit like that. Um, snow sports. But he's always like, dude, no one ever talks about like the cool fun shit like after. You know what I mean? So like, I wonder like. Do you eventually want to do like putting on big shows? Do you eventually want to put on like a festival one day? Oh hell yeah! Like, hell yeah. what's your goal? What's your goal and dream of bars over bars? You know? Um, I've been saying this for a while, um, and I think very soon it's going to change. But I've been, I've been building the foundation for artists to succeed, and and I think very very soon it's going to be built. But once the foundation's built, we have to build a building, mm -hmm. and. Um, we just we got to keep going, bigger shows. Eventually, I'm trying to create this infrastructure where no matter where you live in the country, in the world, you can get to a hip hop show in like an hour, and in a month. So, we're talking multiple shows a day, multiple places in the country. Damn. Bars over bars. I have we have a West Coast team working right now. We're starting shows over there. Damn. In 2022, we went to Portland, Oregon. I was invited out by the city to do four shows during their hip hop wait, week. Wait. Say that again. I was invited out by the city of Portland, Oregon. Say it slow for Barber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I told you, talk to me like I'm a kindergarten. I was invited out by the city of Portland, Oregon uh, this past August to throw four shows. How um, did you make that happen? I have someone who, um, well, it, it's I, I owe it to my boy D Dwilly, who lives uh, who lives over there, who's from Nashua, New Hampshire. Um, he lives over there in Portland, Oregon. Loves the scene over there. Fe really feel, really truly feels like he belongs in a hip hop scene now that he lives over there. And I, I'm so happy for the dude. Um, he, he got me the connect, and he was talking to people, and they believe in what we do, and they wanted us to come out and help throw some shows. And now my man D. Dwilly is going to be running the Oregon branch of Bars Over Bars, which in my brain, dude, that's fucking awesome. In my brain, it's exploding, and I say it so like humbly, but to me, I wake up and it's, it's just so crazy. That's nuts. Just because of that, just because someone knew someone. Yeah, like, the oh, fucking fuck city it. said, "Come out and throw some. Come shows out and throw day. some shows. We'll fund them." And what part? And the that's crazy, bro. That's oh, congratulations. Yeah, yeah, congratulations. Dude. Congratulations. That's, that's pretty massive, bro. So you're, you're getting some success. You're fucking. Yeah. You're building that fucking foundation. You're getting it. So that shows us that like we can have a PDX branch, which is like Oregon and Washington. Mm -hmm. We could have a California branch. We can have a DMV branch. We could have a tri-state area branch. That'd be lit. Like we can. It's and I'm slowly, slowly building a trustworthy network of people who can work not under me, but but together yeah. to make to bring free hip hop shows to the country and hopefully then the world. You eventually, yeah, that'd be sick. And then you should offer like a like a premium model where like for people like us that will actually be willing to pay and like support you and shit like that. Yeah. Um, they're like essentially, essentially like the, describing like an, another Rolling Loud, essentially. You know what I mean? And like, you could you could throw a premium model where like for like a weekend, right? You shut down like not shut down, but like you do it like on an off season where like there's no other concerts everywhere or shows anywhere else except this one spot, and everyone comes for like a three day festival. Yeah. And like fucking goes and like you got vendors, fucking, and you have some of the biggest artists in the game. Yeah, come out and do a fucking show for you. That's um, that's, that would be unreal. That's where the New England unity has to come in. Yeah, where I need to. You'd only do it in New England too, though. If you did that, if I if I had, if you to, got that, I'd have I'd have to. That would be lit. I'd That'd be like to. Rolling Loud, like in because Rolling Loud just started doing it in New York, so that would be lit if you did one here. Yeah, uh, that's that is a plan for the future. I need to continue building the connections and the partnerships. Yeah. Um, like for example, we have two shows this month. Would say that they're mm -hmm. co they're co-hosting the events. I reached out. Well, we yeah. we did a show in um, September together, yeah. and it was great. And I reached out again, and I was like, "Hey, you guys want to do some more shows together?" And they were like, "Fuck yeah!" yeah. And then that's like 
two two businesses coming together, which is something I want to do with you guys. But that's like two businesses coming together to make dope shows happen. Yeah, and like, and and bro, you guys are just like building that arsenal. You know, you're having that arsenal and, built up. And, and when social network, and when this festival happens, it needs to be like a hundred of them, like yeah, to make it. Because right now, if you ask me to throw a festival, and I couldn't do it by myself. No, I, feel I couldn't, you. and I'm not even gonna try because. Cause I can't. I feel you. Like not all of us is fortunate enough to have the money and have the bread and have the connection on the bat. People look at Rolling Loud like, bro, that was built for like that's a years of like like the back end shit. Yeah. And like, bro, even when we go to Rolling Loud, like I went and all these cust- uh, fucking EDM festivals or Coachella, all these shit started off like that. Where like they don't run just by themselves. It's like a community. Yeah. And like you have all the vendors. You have even a cereal vendor that like just literally all the vendors that get set up. All the artists get set up. It's a fucking mass. So you know how it is. Like on that scale. But you make a fuck ton of money probably. And it's such a big liability too. So that's what I'm saying. Like I can't wait for you to get to that. That's going to be lit. Obviously, I love the groundwork you're putting down. But like, bro, I mean, you're talking like you can make the next fucking movie out here. You know what I mean? uh, In my brain, this is the biggest thing in the world. This is the biggest thing in the world. This is the biggest thing in the world. That's sick. And and I have to wake up every day feeling that way or it's not. It's never going to be But you're going to say to your roots though. You're going to make sure that. The people that you grew up with and got you to that, you're gonna make sure you put them on. You know what I'm saying? Most, like most definitely. Um, it's very important that even when we do festivals, we're still doing shows at a fucking sneaker store. Oh fuck yeah! Like, like there's always gonna. This platform is truly built for big headliners, which yeah. we've booked, and artists who've never performed before, which we booked. Um, that's because that feeling is. And it's important unreal. that we can capture both of those markets Mm -hmm. because eventually the person who never performed before is going to be the big headliner. Yes, sir. And I don't want it to be like, I don't want him to be, I don't want to take the credit. I don't want to take the credit for that. about the little guy. I don't want to take the credit for that, but I want to help. I want to help that person anyway. That's going to help you and have them use the platform because that'll help me and we'll just be helping each other. Yeah. Because the artist is more like not selfish, but they care about themselves. You know, like the artist is like working to get their music. It's a very singular path. Yeah. Well, your path is very commutative. You know what I mean? And it's like everyone grows together. Like, like for example, right? He, he got a big festival. He got rolling the next rolling loud bars over bars. The next biggest thing in the fucking world. Bartober. Fest. Bar Tober. You already know. You know what I'm saying? Bar Jingle Bars. You know what jingle I mean? bars. <laughs> but like Hello Bars. But I'm saying like <laughs> he does that. He signs he signs Playboy Cardi to do a fucking crazy show. You, and, and Rolling Loud does this too. If you look at the Rolling Loud list, yes, you have Cardi, Travis, all these crazy people. And you got people who aren't even on the flyer. And you have people that aren't even on the flyer. You got Pierre Bourne. You got like little smaller people, even small people than fucking him, Ruby Rose and like all these other people because they put on the big artists, but they at late like, they come later at the night. Like Travis won't go out until like eleven, but in the in the beginning of the day they have those like smaller artists like Sofago and shit like that. Well, that people yeah, don't even know. Yeah, but they have artists that literally don't even make the fucking flyer. like don't even make, don't the, make the, the schedule flyer. and they pay mean? so much money for it, bro. Because to them, performing at Rolling Loud is like a fucking dream, dude. Yeah, but but yeah. like they're hyping it up. Dude, I could talk about this for days. That's why we're here. Um, <laughs> but but promoters hype up opportunities like like oh you're gonna open for Travis Scott as if Travis Scott is even gonna be in like a mile distance between you. Exactly. Um, like I, I've been in situations where like I've opened for terminology three times, not at my events, but like he wasn't even there for my set oh, all he, three yeah. of those times and the promoters are hyping it up like yeah it's gonna be a killer opportunity you're gonna open for terminology you're gonna get so many fans and like nobody's there till terminology's there and like i'm, That's perform- how it's I'm performing at five and terminology's performing at one yeah and it's I it's feel sh- you. It's shit like that. Yeah, but still, like, that's still dope. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's still fucking sick, though. Because you could have not done it at all. No, yeah, you're right. Or rather, you have the opportunity to not. But yeah, you're right. They hype it up a little too much. Yeah. Um, the things, something you said about artists being about themselves, that is totally true. We're all fucking egomaniacs. Yeah. We're, we're crazy people. Um, the things that we do at Bars Over Bars to make it more of a community um, is that we don't do personal flyers. You I make one flyer. That's the flyer. All the information's on it with all the artist names. Um, make it fair. S- some promoters will make each artist a personal flyer, and most of the time, no other performers are on that flyer, not even their names. And it becomes this situation where it's, oh, it's like, my concert. Come see Millie's. Um, an opening for Millie's is this one dude, and then each one of those gets a flyer for the one dude. Mm-hmm. And it's and there's never a flyer for all the dudes yeah at once and then and and even when you get a big headliner like that like 
you're lucky if the headliner even posts the flyer. Yep. But to have a headliner post a flyer with everybody's name on it, that could be game changing for that artist's career. But but peop- promoters just don't do that. I I don't do any pictures on flyers. No, I don't do any faces on flyers because I feel like if I put the headliner's face there and nobody else's face, it's it's less about less about everybody. You keep it really fair. Yeah. And that's similar. Like I said, you're, you're taking inspirations from other places, I'm pretty sure. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's, that's you're doing it. You have a really good model. Yeah. yeah. If, if I book you on a show and you make your own flyer and we, we have a problem, but if you make your own flyer and it's just you and nobody else is on the flyer, we're not friends anymore. Because that is not what I'm what yeah. I'm trying, and I've had people do that. It's and not just their it's show. It's not what it's I'm trying to build. The, it's a community. The reason I don't do physical tickets for shows is and give them to artists is because it becomes a situation where it's like come to my show, not come to the show, and then people show up for just their person and then yeah. leave. And it's very important that these events continue to be community based hip hop events where all the artists come together. To, to work together and, and have a dope show. We're, lo- we're looking at the next biggest thing right here. 100%. 100%. Game-changing model. You, not, only the, not only do I... I believe in your model and how you run it, and it clearly has been successful, yeah. and it will continue to be successful, yeah. but the way, the way you go about it as well, too, is what really is true and fair, and I think a lot of people are going to see that and admire that. Because yeah. you have uh, to differentiate somehow. And you're clearly, the model that you're doing is your differentiating factor. Already not charging people puts me in a completely different plane right. from the dozens of promoters here in Boston that throw events. Because these are completely free shows. Yes. For the artists. For the artists. Some <laughs> events I do have to charge the fans. Yeah. Just because. Like, like, how much are usually tickets? I, most of the time they're 10. Okay. I don't like to do more than 20. But if I book a headliner that like wants a lot of money, I obviously have to do something. Um... I would say about half of our events a month are completely free for fans, um, which is which is good. Um, but sometimes, like if I'm at a store, they want like money because there's overhead. Like someone's got to be there and watch us and shit like that. So like I do have to charge some fans, but like everyone gets a plus one. You know, if there's money at the end of the night, I'll give you some. But most of the time, I break even and I'm a happy guy. Damn. But like if, if you're an artist who just comes to perform, uh, brings nobody. And then leaves and then messages me later, like, are you gonna pay me? Like the answer is no, I can't I can't really do that. You're a nonprofit. Yeah, Mo- they should they should know that before they even come in the seven the door to work with you. Yeah. They know what they're um, signing up we're for. We're mostly a nonprofit. Um and but one one day one day you're gonna be charging six hundred dollars for tickets VIP. Yeah, maybe. Boom, and I'm buying all of them. Buying all I'm them. buying every single fucking one of them. You're gonna be doing a big ass show. You're gonna be doing it like in fucking oh, oh jingle bars, Jing, uh, jingle, jingle bars, <laughs> jingle oh, bars, bar Toberfest, uh, bar bar ween, ween hollow bars. You're gonna be doing the fucking everything, and I'm gonna you're gonna have like VIP tables and shit like that. I'm gonna get one. I'm gonna get like two of them, and we're gonna Question. rip it. Mm-hmm. The name bar, what is, what is it? Bar, bars, over bars, bars over bars, bars over bars, bars over bars. I have an idea of wh- how you came up with it. Tell me if it's right. If not, I want to hear how you came up with it. So, mm-hmm. bars as in like hip hop bars, right? Yep. Over yep. bars like drinking bars. Um, is that is that basically what it is? Did I did I get that? No. The idea. Uh, the tell them. Tell them. The idea <laughs> is that uh, the people I book have so many good bars, bars that we over, have bars over, over bars. bars. Did you re- okay. hold, on, hold on? Did you really? I, think- I thought about it a little too hard. I'm sorry. Did you? I told you it's always technical, but like it's like. <laughs> bars over bars is like I got so many fucking bars You're just a fucking animal You know what I mean You thought it was bars over like drinking bar <laughs> Like your bars over bell in hand <laughs> I, I get that shit all the time But I'm, I'm married to the name So I can't change it I love it though I love that recurring B too Bars yeah. over bars You know what yep. I mean Real relate no, Double R Double B <laughs> I like that That's cool Bars, yeah. are, bars that are relatable <laughs> That's awesome man So I feel like Go ahead Barbara I was gonna say something I've been talking a lot No go ahead I was gonna say, what's your next like? What's your not not crazy like rolling loud crazy big festival moves? That's we're just thinking in the fucking future and the space time and continuum. Yep. Yeah, like five, ten, what's eight. your like? What's your like next up big next recent big move? You know what I mean? What are you? Is, is are you focusing on yourself in the music? Next, you said I know you have a project yeah. coming out soon, or are you focusing more on like the? Because if you're focusing on the music soon, that means that the, the the shows might not be super crazy right now. No, are you are you balanced them both pretty well? No matter what I do. Yeah. Um, I, as an individual, will always be successful whether I make music 
or run the shows. And that's why I, I'm doing both at the same time mm -hmm. and trying to put them both on equal planes. And lately it's been shows, 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 and not so much music, but I'm, I'm slowly working the music back up. Even if I don't perform at a show and I'm just hosting, like it's still a spotlight for, for my company and thus myself. Uh -huh. and I don't like that credit because I'd rather have the people fuck with the people who performed more. Mm -hmm. But like I am I am the face of the company and I am the backbone of the company. Mm -hmm. So without me it doesn't run. So when when the sh when the shows go good, it reflects on me good. So even if I don't perform at events, which I normally don't do anymore, last month we, th we threw 12 shows and I only performed at two. Yeah. And those were because those were collab events and the co-hosts wanted me to perform. So if I just booked those myself, I wouldn't have performed. Yeah. So this company slowly isn't becoming about me as a performer anymore, but more me as a MC and a facilitator. Mm -hmm. So no matter what, but, but still no matter what I do, it is, it is, I'm, it is going to be, the spotlight's going to be on me. Yeah. That's good. I hey, mean, you're a quarterback. Hell yeah. Yeah. I feel, but you got to make sure your team good too. Yeah. That's good. So well, like I said, not to like say that I think, and not to give you like no credit, I'm saying like. For your next, what's your next biggest thing besides the album that you have come or the music coming out soon? Like, like any concert. big big show that you're planning what's in 2022? Up, you, know? or you got shows all the time. Is there something? You have something? In, I know you have something in your mind that must be big coming up next. What's your next big move? I don't have any super big shows planned, um, but I think every show we do, um, we're learning more and more to make shows better. Mm -hmm. um, the album is going to be dope. It's going to be called Dead on Dudley. Mm -hmm. It's inspired by the death of Tupac. Mm -hmm. um, most of the music I make. Um, is inspired by the people who in hip hop who have passed and a lot of it is about um, why do we love why do we love artists more when they're dead than when they're alive why why is relevance only like 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 with Tupac and Biggie being everyone's top 10 if they were still alive you know sure. what I'm saying that's what you, that's what a lot of my music is about what do you think about the death of like Pop Smoke XX Tentacion like these artists Lil Peep Mac Miller We've we see it a lot, unfortunately, and um, how music is handled after death is is truly what how a legacy can be prolonged or smothered. Mm -hmm. um, people like Triple X, who who died tragically, to then have a label milk all their unfinished songs mm -hmm. is crazy. Um, and whether we like it or not, that music could define their whole career. Because right. yep. someone could listen to that artist and listen to a song that they didn't even want to put out. And then that defines them. And then it's like, is the people that he wanted to get the money for his songs even, like, is his family getting paid for this music? Probably not. Yeah, I mean, what, the problem is with X, it's, very, it's case by case. With X, it's like, even with DMX, it's like, it's with X, it's like, his mom is milking the fuck out of his shit. He he had that last great album, which was the uh, the question mark. Mm -hmm. That was like the one last album that he really worked on. I could tell that like, you know, he had a lot of issues, like violence charges went on him and shit like that. He was beefing with like the Migos, I think, and shit like that. But that question mark album was an album that really I felt like he broke out of that like hardcore, like crazy <laughs> rap shit. He was like trying to sing and like he was changing his sound. And he was trying to like he was doing community service. He was trying to be wholesome, kind of like Eli Chapa. And like then he died, you know what I mean, which sucks. And then I feel you. Then like sending with Pop Smoke too. I feel like the label is just like fucking like just milking the shit. Juice World, you know what I mean? Milking like not milking it. They haven't even been able to release any music because all his shit gets leaked out. You know what I mean? So I feel you. That can define. That can make or break an artist. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, you you get an artist like like Eminem who's still alive. Who Eminem's not even in my top twenty five, but I respect him as the top selling hip hop artist of all time. Because he deserves it. Because mm -hmm. that's what he got. He got those accolades. He's he's a phenomenal rapper. He's, he's a phenomenal rapper. I think he's one of the best rappers of all time. But like, he drops a semi bad album like Revival, and all of a sudden, it, on the internet, his whole career it's is tainted. just is tainted. And to me, that's crazy. And and if he if he died tomorrow, would people be like, oh, like all his stuff's great. We love Eminem. I don't know. It's questions I ask in, mu in my music a lot. Um, they just don't have any answers. But I think it's important that we, as people who listen to music, understand the aspects of a legacy. Yeah. Appreciate me while I'm here. Definitely. Love me now. Thank me now. 
Don't thank me later. You know what I mean? So, like, that's true. I feel you. Drake did a song like that. He's like, thank me later, but, like, fuck it. Thank me now because I'm here now. So I feel you. Yep. A lot of artists say that, be saying that, too. Like, oh, you guys only appreciate this artist when they're dead, when they're gone and shit like that, which is, like, true because everyone's a bunch of bandwagoners. You know what I mean? So, like, there's only a few people that, like, really appreciate hip-hop music or tapped in and shit like that. And I'm no, I'm not, like, a fucking god with that shit. But, like, I I, I loved fucking Juice Square before. I was fucking with X before, like, while he was doing this shit. I didn't really listen to Lil Peep like that at all. And I didn't think he made music, at least for me. Uh, Mac Miller, I know everyone loved Mac Miller and shit like that. So, I definitely feel there's definitely, like, the, uh, it's inevitable, though. They're yeah. going to get a spike up in the music, clearly. You know? Clearly. The, that need is there, but. I mean, when MF Doom died, his streams MF went up Doom. 600%. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's, and... That it, and MF Doom's, Doom's a terrific artist. I didn't know about that guy until he died. Yeah. Even Cardi would mention him on his album. He was like, yeah, DMX. You know what I mean? So, like, I feel you, bro, definitely. Uh, Jesus. Death gives relevance, unfortunately. Yeah. That's, it, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's, un, it's inevitable. You know what I mean? Um, talk to me about your hoodie real quick. So, this is... Tell them about the hoodie. I like those, it. For those um, at home, Boom. at home tuning in. Tuning in. Um, this is a company called iAIM. Uh, they're based out of Quincy, Massachusetts. Uh, they get their stuff printed at Self Made, which is another fantastic store in Quincy. That's where I get all my shit printed. Um, and they're just super cool dudes. I thought I represent. Yeah, we're working with a company to do our merch right now too. Where are they, where are they looking at that? Uh, uh, mass Printing in Woburn. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, we're doing them, but you know, walking just around. We throw we throw shows at a smoke shop in Woburn. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a cool spot. Oh, word, word. It's right yeah. in four corners. Well, we might. Hey, we might fucking. I can go over there too. Out. Yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see. I oh, know I'm saying that like, the printing as well too for their fire. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, my dude, fucking. So so I hear you're gonna rap for us. Yeah. yeah so that's why I was kind of like we 40. I'm like looking at the time. It's 40 minutes in. I'm like no, nah, nah, not yet, not yet, not yet. But um, what are some what are some things you would say to like an upcoming creative right now? Maybe yeah. maybe like. You could you could really talk to both. You could talk to a creative like an artist, like a rapper or a singer or someone like that, like who's struggling. Or you can even talk to someone maybe on the other end who wants to do more of the business shit, like putting on shows or like even just business stuff. So what would you say to anyone right now that's coming up? Um, like what's that one like what did Q and C say? They were like they were like oh, uh, have the have the big dream. It was like uh, it was it was like essentially it was like have the big dream, have that goal, have that ambition, have visual, that visualize, strategize, and capitalize. Yeah, so basically have the dream, know where you have that fucking have that belief, have that dream, that thing behind you that drives you. Then have a blueprint, like a plan or like yeah, a strategy, strategy to yep. to achieve that. If plan, dreams are dreams, but chase your dreams and, and and make them somewhat of a reality. Think about create, how it could possibly get it. You know what I mean? Create just. I mean, it may be impossible, but try. You know what I mean? And then after that, execute. You know, because it's like have I was the saying, plan now do it. Yeah, like do. How do you execute actually those little things to get that big one? So what what's kind of your advice going to creatives around the world and shit? Creating a plan for yourself is obviously a great idea. Mm -hmm. Um, As far as like making music, um, there are a few sort of, um, there are a few things you should do to set yourself up to be accessible to the most amount of people. Putting your music on everything, very important. Um, Knowing how to use social media, very important. Mm -hmm. Um, There are a lot of rules and stuff like that that you can, that you can really benefit to get your stuff out to more people. Um, As a creative, I think it's important um, it's important to learn what you want to do, what you want to accomplish, and what you define as successful. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I said this earlier. I'm going to write a book about it, but I never will because I, I, I don't have the, <laughs> He's I, never I, the I book. Don't He's... Have, I don't have the attention span for it. But success is truly self-determined. Um, like, I just got 100 followers on Spotify today, and I feel super cool. Congrats. That's, just, that's, all, that's no, awesome. No, 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 that, good congrats. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I have 6,000 followers on Instagram. Um, so I got numbers all over the place, whatever. Bro, but but I, I, I'm like bathe in that. Yeah. Bro, like, I, you know? I feel super successful knowing that even one person listened to my music today. Facts. And, and it's important that, that you find sec- – that you set your bar for success – and where you set it, you'll probably, you'll hopefully reach it because that's where your drive and your ambition will be. Um, for me as a creative, I am literally successful waking up every day. There's, there isn't a number you could throw at me where I'd be, where, where I'd be happy because I'm just, I'm just happy being here. Um, I, like I said, I make music for myself and, and I'm very, very successful. I feel very successful for the music I've made. And I think um, as a creative, 
you gotta find you gotta find where you want you gotta find your definition of success. Find your definition. So, of gen, so gems I just took from that is use words of self affirmation. Yes, sir. Okay, word. I need to practice that more, man. I'm too hard on myself sometimes. But. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. I'm, I mean, like, you know, we've thrown 92 shows, and I say that number like it's a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, there's going to be a thousand, a million more of them. And every show, um, even if it's a step backwards, just make sure the next one is two. And just keep going forward and forward and forward because, like, shit's not built in one show. This shit's not even built in 92 shows. It, we got to keep moving forward, keep finding success, keep learning and keep pushing yeah and you believe you gotta have that one guy on the team that believes yeah that believes in you more than you believe in anything else you know what i mean right there support right Boom. there right, right there because i feel you i was I, was, I, was, I, was, I tell people all the time i was watching the suicide squad movie and like the reboot and like there was a part in the very right beginning of the movie where like the dude's like i can't do this i can't do this and the girl's like no we need you to do it and he's like I, I can't like i'm gonna die if I, he's like no i believe you like if you don't do it we kill you right now and like she's like, damn. she's like, but he's like, I don't know if I have that. No, we know you have this ability to do it. I was like, damn, this shorty believes in this dude more than like this dude believes in himself. And like, it's tough because it's like, there are some days you probably feel where you're like, I don't want to do this shit anymore. Sometimes, right? Like, yeah. it's like, some days you're like, yo, fuck this. Like, I'm tired. I'm beat. I'm not making it. Like, it's tough. But then there's those days that you wake up and you're like, yo, movie. This was awesome. This shit fucking makes it worth it. Whether it's a, a DM for someone saying thank you or like a fan like buying a piece of merch or like just someone is saying something nice to you about it, you that pushes you to go because ultimately as a visionary, as a creative, it's where we link up. It's like you know consistency is key and you know that if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to branch out from everyone else and become successful. Like you said, this shit isn't built. Rome isn't built in a day. No, sure. You know what I mean? So like you know a lot of people always like Liam asking this question what differentiates us from everyone else is that we didn't stop we kept going I believe that consistency will eventually lead to success not not like dog shit consistency like grow every time yeah but you'll make it you'll you'll become successful I didn't I didn't start off with a million dollars I'm not Kylie Jenner I'm not fucking Travis Scott but like for the regular person that wants to make it this is how you do it. This is the grind. This is how you have to have someone like you, like me, believe in the team and everybody and have that backbone to keep pushing. Even when you have shitty fucking days, you get up and you fucking push through that shit because you know down the line from the things you have achieved that it's possible to achieve that success. You wake up every day and you're like, damn, you know, I'm out right now. I have all these problems, but you never look back on the days that you were waiting for like this moment that you're in right now, like 10 years ago when you were a little kid, you were probably like didn't even imagine that the back then you were like, yo, I want to be this crazy. Cause I know as a creative, you always have those thoughts. Where you're like, yo, I was a kid. Like, yo, I want to be a big YouTuber. I want to be a big content creator. I want to be, I want to be a big this. And you, you always in the back of your head, whether you want to admit it or not, that was true. You want to start a business. You want to do something. And you forget that back then you want to be exactly where you're at right now. And sometimes you forget about that and you're like, fuck, like, I should be grateful for the moment that I'm in right now. And that pushes you to keep going every single day. Hell yeah. And then when you're 35, when you're 40, you're going to look back on the moment right now and be like, yo, I remember I was, on, I was in that podcast room and we were fucking talking about this shit. And he's like, yo, that was ill. I thought I was successful then. Now I'm even more successful. You know what I mean? So, like, keep pushing. And we believe in you. That's why we have you here in the show. You know what I mean? We didn't have you on the show. We didn't DM you. We didn't talk just because, like... We like we want to like capture the no. We care about you as a person, you know, and both of you guys. You know what I mean. So like, we believe in you. You know what I mean. So we want to see you grow and succeed as well. We so that's what real rate's like, all about. Our fans. We want to show our fans you because you. we think you're fucking cool as shit. So like, Thank that's you. we're we're excited, bro. You know what I mean. And even like, however way we can support you and like help you through your journey and get to you where you need to get to. We're down. Granted, I don't have $100 million. Like, don't ask me to buy 100 fucking t-shirts. But, like, yeah. but like, any way I could help out, we were going to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I appreciate the support. You're like, dude, I don't even, you just threw a fucking Kanye ran at me for a second. Yeah. Damn. Houseway. Damn. Houseway. 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 He's like, Sway was like, yo, chill, chill, relax. You don't got the answers. The, the recent interview he did was crazy, bro. What? Uh, oh, where he said the biggest mistake of his career was signing Big Sean. That was crazy. Bro, I have like I saw the interview with like the uh, for the drum kings or whatever I forget what they're called. Oh, dr um, drum ch junk tramps or something like that, champ, ch something like that. But dude, they were just like baiting him to say some crazy shit, bro. And I'm like, god damn, bro, it was an absolute crazy of a mess. But 
He said he took Soldier Boy off the album because his verse. He goes, he goes, yo, he's like, you heard Soldier Boy's verse? I'd fucking take Soldier Boy off the album too. (laughs) Hell yeah! It's just Soldier Boy's mad because he's like, well, then why were you texting me, like all the shit that you loved it? You know what I'm saying? Like that's kind of fake. But then again, people were like, well, you didn't want to hurt your feelings, bro. You know what I'm saying? But fucking yo, so you're working with the Say That podcast guys? Yeah. How did that work out? Like, uh, like, how did they call? So give me an example, like how they did it. Um. So most of the time when we co-host, um, I have um, I have them. Like, we just divvy up the responsibilities. So yeah. th- they'll pick half the artists. They'll host half the show. Like usually it's just me. I'm seeing like, oh, up next we got like so and so. But I had them upstage with me, and we were all talking to the crowds. And it's it's stuff like that to really involve. They got a mic. They're going hard to involve them as much as possible. Yeah, letting them choose half the artists and then me choose half the artists really brings a bunch of people who probably never would have knew each other. Especially me, like they the people they're booking, I've never worked with until until I've worked with them, and now it's a, a bunch of people that I book on without them. Yeah. So it's it's just this, and now the people I booked with them that they don't know are on their podcast. So it's just yeah. like. Cross pollination, cross pollination, baby. Oh, that's his that word. word. That's his word. It's, that's... Cr- it's cross promotion. Cr- there you go. The more people we work with, the, the the bigger the bigger of a network we're building. That's awesome, dude. We gotta get like Leo Dia, Infinite. Like try. Yo, if you guys want to throw a show, let me know. All I got is. We don't got that many. That's like that's all. I, that's all I know. <laughs> like, well, I don't book, minor flaws. We like the EDM. I don't book like twenty artist showcases. Yeah. And the reason I don't do that is because the more artists you put on a show, especially in the least amount of time, the less set time they have. And and if if you end up in a situation where an artist set time is the length of a smoke break, people miss it anyway. Yeah. So w- with a two hour long show, I don't book more than six artists. And then there are promoters that try to fit 20 artists in a four-hour show. And I don't know how they do it, but artists get cut from those shows. If we wanted to put on a show, how many artists would we need? Um, I don't do more than six artists per show. So you'd need. So if you'd want to do a co-show, yeah. I'd need three. Oh, that's easy. We can 100% do that. Let's do it. But my guys are over in L.A. Okay. And well, some of them are here. Well, good thing we got a West Coast branch. Oh, but I want to go to the show. Can they? What if they can flew? What if they flew out over here? Well, we got the live stream, but I want to be there. <laughs> I can fly. You have a West Coast. You have West Coast guys in, L- in L.A. Yes, I would fly out and go for a show. That'd be fucking lit. Take hmm. a little vacation. Oh well, they well they come they they would come over here too. They could come over here. I'll book anybody anywhere. Okay, we need six artists. Okay, I'll th- I'll assemble the uh, yeah the Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send I'll send with a real relay team of Avengers. I don't book um I don't book too many things in Boston. Yeah, but like you know like like I said we're in Woburn we're in Bridgewater we're in Quincy. Yeah, well it's I mean Boston area like, bunch we'll go anywhere of, bunch of places. Yeah, these artists are like people again that like want to do shows. Yeah, now would they have to be a hundred percent hip hop or like no. could, could they be like, Th- like they would just have to be in the realm of hip hop. So, yeah, but like Infinite does like ah stuff. So, so like I'm booking De La Grim this month. He's from Lowell, and he's a he's a hip hop dubstep artist. Okay. So the vibe of that show is more electronic. Okay. But it's it's still in the realm of hip hop. I booked hip hop rock shows. Ah. I booked I booked hip hop pop shows. Oh, okay. It's it's. He does like R and B, like maybe not like like Infinite makes specific like Spanish music as well. But he could do like R and B and shit like that, like more hip hoppy. The curation gets tough. Yeah, and what I mean is that the more specific of a show you book, the the more you should find people that blend well together. Yeah, because I can't, I can't, I get artists that hit me up and they're just like, I want to be on the most amount of shows. I want to be on every show. I can bring this amount of people every time, and it's like I don't care. Yeah, because if I put you on every show. There's gotta be a show where you don't benefit from it because you don't fit the vibe, exactly. and then your fans don't like the performers, and then their fans don't like you, and there's yeah. no growth there. We could we could find like six people that gel well together because the artists that I'm mentioning they all would probably gel well together. Sometimes I'll book an artist six times in a month, and then other times I won't. I won't book them for six months. Dude. And it's and it's just it's it's finding the right opportunities for the right artist. And sometimes I get in a situation where artists drop out, and then I gotta call an audible or whatever. And it's not always it's odd, not always perfect, but for the most part, our shows are pretty well curated to to fit the vibe so everyone can. Grow and how do you other. get like the people to come? Like if I got these artists, like how do they, how do you bring the audience? In, yeah, you know, uh, promotion is great. 
Um, people downplay the amount you can do with Facebook without throwing money at it. Yeah. Uh, we had like 60 people at our show last night in Bridgewater, and I didn't throw a dollar at Facebook or Instagram promotion. I've never threw Instagram or Facebook money ever, and our shows are, have pretty well turnouts. Damn. Um, like the sneak, like I talk about the sneaker store in Haverhill a lot because like that you should was, do it there. That was the first place we threw a show at, and it fits forty people. Do we should and do that. If I'm everyone, gonna... even if even if you get twenty people there, it's still a good fucking time. Yeah. Well, le- well, the guys I'm talking about, they're from Lawrence. Then let's do it in Haverhill, dude. Yeah. You guys want to do it next month? Well, I got to. Well, hold, hold on there, Buckaroo. This guy's hold all had to hold on. <laughs> hold your horses. All I need is at least two weeks to promote a show, and it's perfect. Bet. <laughs> it's it's perfect. Buckaroo. I could, <laughs> all I need. All I need. Uh, I could. I could so. Okay, let me talk to let me see the, the the list of artists that we have in the real relate realm. I know at least three off the bat. Okay. I could probably get another I need at least six, right? Yeah. Okay, so let and, me see if I can if and if you want to book all of them, if you want if you want to pick all six instead of you pick three, I pick three, you can do whatever. Oh, you'll pick you an, you'll you'll fill the rest? If if you don't like if if you want start, start with three, bro. Start with three. Start I want with three, I'll pick three and we'll rock it. Dude, that would be lit. I have a couple people that I want to put on. This yeah. would be awesome. And and I book. And if you know, it will help you promote. That'd be lit. I'll throw the dolls at Instagram. I ho- <laughs> I, I'd hope you help me promote. Oh fuck yeah! What are you crazy? Um, our artist. Um, yeah. I mean, I get artists. I book all the time who you know don't who, who don't post it. But like, we don't need them. It. But at the same time, it's like not everyone uses social media like that. Yeah. And. I got, people, I, how, do they, how do they expect like them to grow? Like, I got people to grow. Like, yeah, um, tell your friends. Like. No, well, uh, no, like those. Like I got people with like no Instagram account who bring like twenty people. Damn. Oh. It's people, and it, you don't need a you don't need a hundred heads, dude, per no. person. You really just as no. collectively as a whole, twenty to forty people. Dude. I've had like the first couple shows we did at the sneaker store to build it was it was just like us and the artists. So, and we still had a great fucking time. Oh, it's it's right. it's the energy. It's the energy that I bring as a host and a facilitator that really runs the event, and and it's hard to explain because you ne- you've never been to one of my shows, but like you know that like I go ham, yeah, and and it's in it's important that the host and the face of the event is part of the show because then the, then the vibe dies without you. Like I'm yeah. taking photos, I'm fucking like freaking he's, out he's taking exactly he's paparazzi like he's the social media he's everything i'm everything i could be wrong i could, I could imagine you there with like leo dia like i'm, hype, you, you I'm hyping up the talking crowd him to get everyone coming in adrian's there like bradley's there i it would be dope to do the sneaker shop in Haverhill, but it would be sick to do it at the spicker river as well too in yeah. lawrence um so spicker river right now is outdoor only oh. um so There's definitely a couple places in lawrence so that you 100% well do. we're at el taller this friday that's what i'm saying we could definitely I do it i don't know if i'm going to be able to get that again until i play it I'm confident I can get Spicker River at least. But when, it's outdoor, yeah. And but you know, in the in summer, the future, in yeah. the spring, and well, whatever. Well, was this? El- yeah, you have to. Uh, I have to play there first before because, like, this is like such a last minute. Like Spicker River put us at El Taller because yeah. they have construction. Yeah. So, all right, worry that works out. That would be fucking sick too. That's another fucking sick venue in Lawrence, low key. All right, bet. Ah, oh, got me so amped. And if like the equipment I have, like I'm bringing sound to El Taller. Yeah. So like with the equipment I have, I can throw a show in the desert. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. We could literally, if you know, like, a store, if you know a store that you go to, like, wherever, a fucking, a smoke spot, a shoe store, just be like, this could be a cool spot for a show. And yeah. we could just pull up and throw a show there. Yeah. And it benefits the artists. It benefits the small business. It's it's really a one-hand washes experience. Yeah, Cross-pollination. Nah. Cross-pollination. Mm. I want to do it inside and it can be warm and toasty in the winter. It won't be for a minute, so it'll be cold. That's crazy. Whoa. I'm excited, bro. All right, I'm gonna go. We're gonna go back to our peoples, yeah. and we're gonna see what we can do, and give you. We're gonna try. I'm gonna try and find all six. You don't gotta do any work on that front. I love it. I'm gonna try and do as much work as I can for you as possible. Um, the worst part about booking shows is booking shows is very easy. Um, it's it's relying on people that you never should have really relied on mm-hmm. that make it difficult. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times I have artists who don't promote an event. At all, don't repost the story. I tag you in. Don't even engage in the art. Don't even engage in the group chat. Don't post the flyer at all. Don't even talk about it. And the day before, and the day of, they tell me they can't make it. And then it's like, I could have given that slot to somebody who could have done all that. But even if I find somebody to replace you, they don't get that length of time. So to promote, it's yeah. to promote. Do you just cut those those artists off? 
if they if they no show like that or if they last minute cancel. People got shit. People got shit to do. People got lives. Listen, I'm not. I'm not listen, gonna. Listen. People listen. got lives and listen, shit. They could have gave you a way ahead of time. Like they could have, but some people think they're divas out here. Relax. We're just starting out. Listen. Um, for people who I've never booked before who cancel, I ask for a deposit next time, and they get it right back after the performance. Um, when someone drops out, um. I have to change the flyer, which takes time. I have to update all the information. It takes time. I have to now account for the people that theoretically would have came to see you who now could still come and then not want to stay because you're not there. So I lose, I lose those crowd members. Yeah. And then I have to scramble and find somebody who might not be a perfect fit for the event. Yeah, and then he doesn't benefit from it. That's true. Well, at least at least knowing from us, we'll do our due diligence beforehand. Oh, definitely. I'll make sure that the person like I'm making sure they buy their plane tickets and they're here, and their mama's right here, making sure yeah. they're coming out before that, because that's a reflection on us as well too. Like so, like I book an artist a month before the show, and the day of, like hours before the show, he's like, "Yo, dog, I'm not gonna make it. My plane's not gonna land till nah." See, till I would make show. sure, and I'm like, "I don't even know you're on a plane." Yeah, I what would is- make. I would make sure that they're fucking already in the state or in the city before fucking that even comes to that. You know what I mean? Or I'm on the phone with their mom, being like, "Yeah, if he's not here, we got a big problem." You know? Yeah. Um. Even when, even like when I get booked from somebody, when I get booked by a different prom- promoter as a performer, I'm sending them my whole schedule. Big like, facts. I've made time for you here, but here's shit I have going on during the week that may affect that. Yeah, but it probably won't. You'll be straight. But it won't, and I'll be yeah. straight. But that's just common courtesy. Like some people always think we're they're fucking like. Hey, relax, you're not Michael Jackson, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I said, we're a bunch of egomaniacs. We're crazy people. Nah, I feel you. Hey, you got it. To, to be honest, man, like to be a creative, you gotta be a little crazy. You gotta be a crazy. You gotta be like cuckoo. You know what I mean? I feel you. I'm a creative. I'm I'm fucking bananas. Talk to this guy. Yeah, I've been like cuckoo fifty. I've been like fifty fucking hundred group chats. I'm on like twenty FaceTimes a day. Got hundred phone calls. Like, and I do my fucking regular job nine to five. Like, we have like full time jobs too. Like, I feel you, bro. Like, this shit isn't like I fucking barely sleep. Let's last past Friday and Saturday. I did nothing but besides get fucked by the Applebee's on Friday. We love Applebee's. Fuck, did love. you watch Dune? I watched Dune. I fell asleep. Dude, I watched, a little bit. I watched Dune, and I had no fucking idea what anything that happened. We'll we'll talk no real idea. quick. I don't want to hurt Liam's feelings, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Liam, but it's not a nine out of ten. If you it, if you think it's a nine out of ten, you're smoking crack, dude. Like I'm sorry. I love Star Wars. I love Harry Potter. I love Star Trek. I'm a big fucking anime nerd. I love Dune, the book, whatever. But like. The, f- the first one was like two and a half hours of all plot. And for a oh, time. Oh, Exposition the movie? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> Basically, exposition right? Exposition the movie. And like, I'm trying to watch this shit and I'm like, okay, I, I, under- I, I have it on HBO. I had so I'd seen it on HBO Max like the week before, week, two weeks before. I fell asleep an hour and a half in. And like, it was, I was mad high, so I get it. You know what I mean? So I was like, you know, I'm going to go in somewhat sober. I'll be fine. We, we, went to, we went to the Olive Garden in like Dorchester, got a couple drinks. And then we went to Applebee's and got super fucked up. And then we went to the theater. And I'm going to tell them, I'm like, guys, it's going to be a lot of plot. You know, I'm used to plot from Star Wars and all this Harry Potter and all this shit. But, dude, it was a lot, dude. It was a lot. And for someone like me that I'm, I'm, I love lore, I love the storylines and shit like that, it was a lot, dude. And to be honest, like, even Jarrell saw it. And he's like, bro, I'm, I'm still saying six and a half, seven out of ten. Like, it's, 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 just, it's just tough. The next movie will be lit. And then the last one will be even more lit. The next one will be about like him training and shit like that. And the last one will be all the fighting and shit like that. But very a lot, bro. Like the visually presentation was awesome. But thank you, Hero, for coming today. Of course. I appreciate yeah, it. Is there anything coming out? Anything last minute you want to say to the people listening or watching? Anything like that? You, anything. You Floor's know yours. I mean? Floor's yours. Um This is a real relay podcast. Yes, sir. They're pretty cool dudes. Uh follow them. Do all that shit. Shout out them. Yes, sir. Um, do I have to freestyle now? All right, we about to be in the mix with your boy Hero. He's about to freestyle for the boy. For the boy, know. real relate. He's up. He's up. I. Right. All right. Now talking with me. Get him on. The, get him on it. Let's see. You guys ready? Here we go. Oof. Hero the MC is in this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Was born in this bitch. Yo. Check it. Yeah. Real relatable shit. Uh, Ooh. yeah, 
Uh, yeah, yeah, Mike Checker, Mike, Mike, Mike Checker. I walk around like the motherfucking Mike Stepper. Mike check you with these hands, maybe dissect you. Ask Yay, they call me the Blonde Dyke Wrecker. Klondike Eater, walk around with five heaters. Mike check you with the heat, while well, the chrome freeze you. I stay cleaning up the beat like a street sweeper. I control all the lead, call me Screen Freezer. Meditating on these methods of life, I meant what it's like. You ain't never stepping the sight. Been here before like I'm stepping in twice When I kick in the door, man, you finna get sliced Rhymes ripe like fruit of the loom, you stupid To assume that I usually lose, I don't The game's broken, so I fix it myself With nobody else and no other help, it's not self The beat's gone, just me and the sample now I stand in the corner trying to camp the crown to spawn, kill it Better than I ever have said Heavy is the hand that severs the head Call me the placement Chopper the machetes on the shelf A force to be reckoned with You barely just a belch Don't care if you Michael Phelps You swimming up river If you challenging a man Who shoots with a full quiver Useless like Hawkeye battling Hulk You wanna shoot a diss I fire back in bulk Stock shells and I'm leaving that clothes I spit eggshells Probably while you walking on toes <laughs> Uh, check it, 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 yeah Meditating on the life that I live The shows that I've thrown are the places I've been From Portland, Oregon, back to Boston again They want me to trip so the Fucked up Bars Hey, 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 hey Rock it, rock it, rock it, rock it, rock it Check it, check it, check it, yo, uh be very afraid This Cletus Cassidy rapping it carried away From street carnage I ain't all it I ain't polished But nah, I still stainless Keeping the dead brainless You, I ain't hang with I don't wear pink I wreck lies with simple lines Like A, you sink I recognize with six shooters And AI clips To bust down pigs, looters And people who ain't shit uh, That's all I got for right now Hey, That was fire, bro Damn What do you think of that right there? I'm so fucking in my fucking underwear wet right now. Oh my god, that shit was fire. Can, can you do one more beat or no? You out? Put on one more beat. Oh, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. Oh, damn, that was fire. Yo, you're fucking good, bro. Shit. I'm all right. <laughs> I love that, man. Hold Wait, is it, is it Maddie, right? Yeah. Maddie. Oh, man. Maddie, what, what do you think of that, Maddie? It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Which one do you want to do? Like, that man. one from before, or do you want to do. Oh, we did the us two. Oh, which one we do? Maddie, have you seen him do better? Let's do, uh, you? Fuck yeah. Well, fuck you. Live? Hey, yo, yo, he's freestyling. Yo, be, yo wait, have some respect yo, on this wait man, till you, bro. Wait, wait till you see me live. So I'm saying, yo, let's do this one. We picked this one before. Always wishing for something to come true. What can you do? Okay, hold on, hold on. I kind of want to put, uh, yo, he's a good. I want to put you like on a crazy like trap beat right now, low key. <laughs> No, that's not his. I know. Why I would know. you do I that? Know. <laughs> I know. He's like, why would you do that? All right. So listen, real quick. Ready? Come here. Boom. One, two. This is video. Yes, sir. But I'm gonna chop the fuck out of it, so you already know. All right. We back in the lab. I'm gonna turn you back up right now. You ready? All right. Get in the zone. Uh. It's real relatable shit. Check it. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh Back from the dead like Michael Jackson in red jackets Uh, slice the head off a rapper He talking mad, reckless, leave his ass legless And half-stepping, you pass-stepping Look, I'm the piece of the ass, Rick, you can't Ah! Okay, 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 okay Check it, check it, uh Mike Checker, one, two, one, two I'm an underground king, what the hell you gon' do? I can make the ground sing, probably make it bounce through I'm Mary Poppins, y'all call a motherfucker Yondu that shit was fire, bro. No cap. That shit, yo, I love that shit. Right, wrap it up. You already know. Yo, that shit was gas. I'm gonna chop the fuck out. That's gonna be real nice. Yo, good shit. Thanks, bro. Good shit, hero. Good shit, bro. Real Relay fam. Ho, you still getting an outro? You still getting an outro? My bad, fam. Um, Real Relay family. That was Hero the MC. Bars over bars. Come out to a show. Until next time. You already know. Peace out. Deuces. I'm from the Roxbury where the murder is courteous and they'll shoot you nine times just for knowing a curse. Don't give a fuck about your sense, whether it's two or fifty. Crew stay together.